Hello everyone and welcome to our next lecture on data collection, uh, specifically on surveys, interviews. Right, so let's begin. Now, um, when it comes to the stage of data collection, right, now what you should have done before you can talk about data collection is you have to have determined your objectives. What is it exactly that you are looking for that you want to achieve? Right? And you may also want to determine who your sample or who your respondents are. Who are those people that you are going to collect your data from? Now, once you've determined the objectives and the sample or respondents, these in turn determine which uh, method or strategy you use for your data collection. Now, one thing to remember is that at this stage, the more effort you put into this data collection stage, the better quality your data is going to be, right? So there are three main methods that we're going to talk about today. The first being survey, which I'm sure you're quite familiar with, right? Surveys can be done either um, by post when you mail them or they complete them by themselves. Maybe they collect it um, voluntarily or it could be online or through email. Now, there are many ways of distributing the surveys. Now, the key facts of uh, a survey type of data collection is that the responses can be analyzed with quantitative methods, meaning quantity, you know, talking about numbers and percentages, numerical values to liquid type scales, which you are quite familiar with. Besides that, it's also generally easier to analyze as compared to qualitative. When you have numbers and percentages, it's just easier to analyze them as compared to a lot of words. Um, it can also be done uh, via pre-test and post-test, meaning you take one survey at the beginning, maybe uh, after a period of time, you take a second survey, the post-test, and the results of those two tests can be compared and analyzed for similarities or differences and that sort of thing. Now, some of the examples of survey methods, uh, you can use satisfaction or opinion survey. It could be a needs analysis survey, meaning what do the people actually need, or it could be market research. Right. So the second method of data collection is interview, which can be done face to face as is normally done, or it could even be a phone interview. Or nowadays, you can even do it online, right? The key facts for interviews is that it can be done uh, formally, as in very structured. You have all the questions and the interviewees answer only those questions. It could be semi-structured, means you have some questions and then you allow some freedom for um, your interviewees to say other, uh, include other stuff. Or it could be very informally. The questions, though, um, should be focused, it should be clear, and it should encourage open-ended responses. Now, what open-ended means is that you don't restrict um, your interviewees to um, maybe giving them options, saying that, oh, which are the reasons that you feel so A, B, and C only. Open-ended would mean, what are some of the reasons that you do something? And it is open for them to give any variety of answers so that would be open-ended and it's mainly qualitative in nature because it is mostly words you don't have numbers it's more of qualitative um, themes and categories that sort of thing examples it could be a one-on-one -on -one conversation with a parent of an at-risk youth uh, a, a youth or a student who is often not coming to class and that sort of thing for you to understand the issue or interview with a smoker to understand what is their motivation or their urge or desire to smoke. Now, the main thing is that interviews normally help you more in understanding the issue, right? Okay. Um, observations then would definitely have to be face to face because you are observing uh, certain key important things related to your study. Now, some uh, facts about it is that when you do observation, you observe people, it allows for the study of the dynamics of the situation, how uh, real life, how it actually occurs. Or it could be frequency counts. You could count the number of times a certain behavior happens, 
or certain other behaviors. You can count them, how often it happens. It's a good source for providing additional information about a particular group because you can use video to provide documentation or evidence of a certain behavior. And uh, the thing about observation, um, while surveys are mostly quantitative and uh, interviews are mostly qualitative, observations can be both qualitative, where you describe what happens, or it could also be quantitative, where you count how often um, you see that particular category, uh, sorry, behavior, or how long those particular behaviors last. Now, examples would be site visits to a program to look at interaction between the youth and the staff in a program, or even observations in the classroom to see how teachers and students interact, or how students work in groups. Right, now, that's about it. Um, what I want you to do right now is just to, uh, based on what you understand about surveys, interviews, or observations, which of um, these following methods would suit these topics, okay? The attitude of Indian students towards Blackboard, a child's response to a certain parenting technique, um, why teachers support or don't support public caning in schools, um, the time or how long parents spend each week on housework, and the reasons students are unmotivated to study. Now, if for these five topics, which do you think would be the most um, appropriate or suitable method? Survey, interview, or observation? So I want you to work on that and we'll discuss more in class. So that's about it. Thank you and see you. Bye.